Let's examine Macaulay duration in detail. This measure reflects two key observations. Bonds with longer maturities tend to be more sensitive to interest rate changes, while bonds with higher coupons show less sensitivity. By combining these observations, we reach an important insight. The sooner a bond's payments are made on average, the less sensitive it will be to interest rate fluctuations. So, to compare two bonds in terms of their interest rate sensitivity, we can calculate the weighted average time to maturity for all the bond's cash flows. And this is exactly what Macaulay duration does. As shown in the formula, Macaulay duration is calculated by multiplying the present value, PV, of each cash flow by the number of years until the payment is received. For simplicity, we'll assume annual payments throughout. If the payments are semi-annual or follow another frequency, the formula adjusts slightly, but the concepts remain the same. Next, we sum all the maturity-weighted present values, PVs, and divide this total by the unweighted present values of the bond's cash flows. Essentially, this is the bond's price. The result is the weighted average maturity, which is expressed in years. Because we are calculating an average, the Macaulay duration might be, for example, 9.2 years for a 10-year bond even though no actual payment occurs exactly at 9.2 years. This is important to remember. Macaulay duration represents the average time to receive all cash flows, not the specific payment dates. The interpretation of Macaulay duration is relatively straightforward. The higher the number, the longer it takes, on average, for the bondholder to receive the bond's cash flows. As a result, the longer the Macaulay duration, the higher the bond's sensitivity to interest rate changes. This measure takes into account both the bond's time to maturity and its coupon level. And lastly, here are a few useful rules of thumb. For a zero-coupon bond, the Macaulay duration will always be equal to the bond's time to maturity, as there is only one cash flow which occurs at maturity. For fixed-coupon bonds with a coupon greater than 0%, the Macaulay duration will be shorter than the time to maturity, because a portion of the bond is repaid before maturity through coupon payments. The higher the coupon, the larger the portion that is repaid earlier, and thus, the shorter the Macaulay duration. You can think of a fixed coupon bond as a basket of zero-coupon bonds, each with different maturities. Each zero-coupon bond in this basket will have a Macaulay duration equal to its time to maturity. The Macaulay duration of the entire basket is simply the weighted average of the individual zero-coupon bond's durations, based on the proportion of each cash flow relative to the bond as a whole. Let's take a look at a practical example to calculate Macaulay duration, using the bond details provided on screen. We're looking at a five-year bond with an annual coupon rate of 2.4% and a yield to maturity, YTM, of 2.43%. Let's look at the calculation process step by step. First, we consider the cash flows. The bond pays an annual coupon of 2.4% of the face value every year for five years. In the final year, year five, the bondholder receives both the final coupon, the 2.4%, and the face value, 100% resulting in a total cash flow of 102.4% in year 5. The next step is to calculate the present value, PV, of these cash flows. 
Each cash flow is discounted by the yield to maturity, YTM, of 2.43%. The PV is determined by dividing each cash flow by 1 plus YTM to the power of T, where T represents the year in which the payment is received. For example, the present value of the first coupon, 2.4%, is approximately 2.3431%, and the present value of the final cash flow in year 5 is 90.8164%. Now let's move on to the maturity weighted PVs, the PV times T column in the table. This is where we take the PV of each cash flow and multiply it by the number of years until the payment is received. For instance, the PV of the first year cash flow is multiplied by 1, while the PV of the year 5 cash flow is multiplied by 5. These values give us the time weighted contribution of each cash flow. Once we've calculated these, the next step is to sum all the maturity weighted PVs. This gives us a total of 476.4204%. Now, to calculate the Macaulay duration, we simply divide the total maturity weighted PVs, the 476.4204%, by the total PV of the bond's cash flows, the 99.8603%. The result is a Macaulay duration of 4.7709 years. What does this mean? The Macaulay duration of this bond is 4.7709 years, which indicates that the bondholder will receive the bond's cash flows on average in approximately 4.77 years. This reflects the bond's sensitivity to interest rate changes. The higher the Macaulay duration, the more sensitive the bond's price is to changes in interest rates. Since this is a fixed coupon bond, the Macaulay duration is shorter than the bond's five-year time to maturity, as part of the bondholder's investment is returned before maturity through the annual coupon payments, reducing the average time to receive the bond's cash flows below the time to maturity.